Uh, let's jump over to the all pro teams. Let's do it. Uh, these are the guys who we think, you know, if you're drafting your all star lineup, they do the all pro awards first team and second team every year. Um, so that's what we're going to do. It's and again, spoilers, a lot of Echo Fox <laughs> and a lot of Cloud9. Uh, let's start off in NA. We got Mark's picks here uh, for his All-Pro squad going forward. Uh, look at that. <laughs> pretty, so we got pretty simple. I, I'm, you can't tell where these players come from, right? Which teams? It's, it's multiple, right? And two is multiple. Yeah. <laughs> So I've got right at the top, I'm taking Hooney and Dardock straight from Echo Fox. I want sure. the two of them there. They have absolutely, to me, been the top performers in their positions. There's no question about it. And then when you look at the mid lane, I struggle with picking, you know, well, Poe Belter's been pretty good. Febovin has had some hard carries, but it's got to be the man Jensen. Jensen was the guy that I was talking about in the summer split for, that I thought his numbers were impressive enough to win the MVP. And he's doing it again and really performing well for Cloud9. And when you're looking again, then that bot lane for Cloud9, I said, it's arguably performing as good as it ever has. And that largely has to do with Smoothie stepping it up. But Sneaky, again, has been the best AD carry in my position. In my eyes, sorry. I'm the best in that position. In the AD best in that carry. position. Uh, yeah, mine, listen, it's pretty much all Echo Fox and Cloud9 for these top first team all pro. The only difference I got from yours is I'm throwing all tech. I'm ah. throwing in my boy Alltech in that 80 carry spot. Yes, yeah, Sneaky has been great, but he's actually got some of the lowest kills per game out of all the 80 carries in the league. Uh, he finished the game with zero kills on drink. Yeah. And Cloud9 <laughs> won that game. That, that I will say. That was questionable. That questionable. Was <laughs> he's still been fantastic uh, through the split, but I mean, Alltech has put up some awesome performances. You looked at the last game uh, that they played against Cloud9. Him and Adrian were fantastic in that bottom lane, especially in team fights. It helps when you're playing Callista Tom Kench yeah. because that combo oh, is so gross. toxic. It makes me want to puke watching someone I don't have want to, to play think against about that. that. Uh, but he's been super solid uh, and really carried some of these games. I mean, all the attention is going to go to Hooney and Dardock uh, because they have been the best top lane jungle duo. But Alltech in that bottom lane has been a rock. Correct, yeah, and I think that that if you're gonna go elsewhere for the AD carry, Alltech is a very, uh, very reasonable and strong pick there. Again, hasn't looked outmatched in any of his matchups against the other AD carries. Even bringing in, you know, Zven, the best bot, bot, bot from the West coming in, hasn't mattered, hasn't looked outclassed. Alltech definitely a strong pick for an All Pro team. I mean, Zven and Mithy haven't really outclassed anyone. Well, that's the thing, bottom. right? You'd like, you know, you would have expected coming into this to say, hey, well, Zven and Mithy, best bot lane from the West coming in. They've got to be making your all-pro team, right? Not, either one of them didn't make it because either one has not shown anywhere close to the plays that you need to be in an all-pro team, which these guys that are on the all-pro team have been making. they got four weeks left to uh, figure stuff out, Zven and Mithy. Crunch time. As well as uh, the rest of TSM. Uh, there's still a lot of guys who have put up some good performances. So let's look at our second team, all pro, the guys just below. These guys also have still had fantastic splits and spoilers, it's probably gonna be the rest of the Cloud9 and Echo Fox <laughs> uh, rosters. That's why Mark's wearing the Echo Fox <laughs> orange today. Uh, these are Mark's picks. Hey, you gotta respect it. Licorice, this is the guy, this is the rookie of this split. He, other than Hooney, there hasn't been a top laner that has really stood out. Maybe solo, but it's definitely Licorice with more of the impact performances. And then when you're looking in the jungle, this one... So I, some Team Liquid guys. I, I was deciding here between either Sven Skinner or Smithy, and I decided to go with Smithy here. I think that he has performed very well. And yes, you know, sometimes you can get on him for missing some of those skill shots. But at the end of the day, he likes to view it as, well, at least I'm taking these skill shots, right? You know, you're not... You know, it's not the, and not to throw the other guy who I was going to put up here, Sven Skarin, under the bus, but it's not, you know, the Sven Skarin hold on to your Sejuani ult for 22 minutes type of idea. Is he wants well, to get it used and get the, serious shade, use man. the cooldowns. <laughs> I think that Smithy here deserves this second spot in the All Pro team. And I think, again, when you're looking mid lane, Febovin has absolutely been the guy that has stepped up and, pi and picked up some carry game performances for Clutch Gaming. And then down the list, AD carry double lift has looked very solid for Team Liquid. Sometimes making some questionable choices, like recently. This Seems more often than not. Tristana double jump in for the, getting himself inting with the flash. Still up, I will remind you. But I have seen enough from Double Lift to like his performances here. And I think that Hakuo. Hakuo is somebody that does get overlooked on Clutch Gaming, but has been a very solid member for them and has allowed them to be stable in the bot lane. 
Yeah, Hakuo quietly has the highest kill participation and best KDA of mm -hmm. all supports in NA. So I, I'm with, I agree with that. Not Hakuo better than Smoothie, thing. but he's got to be there. But he's been great in that bottom lane. Double lift? I don't know. The first couple of weeks, sure, I would have said that. But the last maybe two or three where Liquid's been struggling, uh, I think a lot of that has been because of double lift's play in that bottom lane. So, yeah. See, I, I view, it, I view it more of impact not quite performing up to that level there. Uh, let's check out... Mine for the NALCS uh, second team. I got a few differences than you. First of all, I like Febivin in the mid lane. I agree with you there. I mean, he's far and away the featured carry on that clutch gaming squad. Most of their wins are from him playing well, and they've won four in a row. I got Sneaky in that bottom lane because Mark had him on his first team. I had Alltech, and I got Adrian in that support spot because, I mean, again, they've been a super consistent bottom lane for Echo Fox. And that handsome, jacked man <laughs> that you're seeing is Mr. Sven Skarin. who looks swole Skarin now. Swole Skarin looks rejuvenated now that he's outside of the chains <laughs> of TSM. He no and longer has to be Bjergsen's ward. That's right. He's Jensen's ward. And Licorice's <laughs> ward. Yeah. Uh, but he just looks, he's looking a lot more comfortable on C9. And he said in pretty much every single interview that he's feeling much more comfortable and relaxed. On cloud nine. Definitely showed on the on the Skarner plays that he's been making right now. Predator Skarner, really impressive work. Sven Skarner's been probably, again, you could say it right here, one of the best junglers in the NA LCS. He's number two in your list. He's number number two. three on mine. Close number three. Close number three. Uh, <laughs> another guy not on those lists who you could definitely make an argument for getting in there is Phoenix. Again, pretty much the one guy out of the top two squads who's not being included right. here. He could definitely be on that list. You could maybe even put him first, you could argue. I just feel, I feel like Jensen and Febovin have been better uh, slightly, but Phoenix has still been an absolute animal in lane. Right. And he's a close third. And I think that that's when you talk about, I think that Jensen and Febovin have shown themselves to be one and two. And then when you're looking at the performances from everyone else so far this split, yeah, you probably would slot Phoenix into number three and maybe Pobelter even into number four right there. Where's Bjergsen? And then Bjergsen maybe number five? Oh, Who knows? No. Sad times for TSM. Again, in four weeks, we do this again at the end of the regular season. <laughs> Bjergsen is the champion. He's yeah. fantastic. Bjergsen it's gets his fifth Everyone MVP. Yeah. Wow. Remember the cruddy part of the regular season yeah. for TSM? No one. No one remembers. <laughs> they just remember they're doing well. But uh, maybe that won't be the case. We can't do NA and not EU. we got to show love to the EU brethren as well. So uh, let's start with my first team All-Pro squad out of the EU LCS. And much like it's a lot of C9 and Echo Fox and NA, well, EU's got a lot of the top three, even top yeah. two squads for me in G2 and Fnatic. I got Wonder in the top lane. Guy's been the best top laner in EU so far. I don't think you can argue that. Basically, the whole top half of the map, I think G2 has had the best performing guys. Yankos and Perks. I think Perks is front runner for MVP right now. AD, I got Hans Sama. Uh, this guy, yeah, Misfits has been struggling lately, but this guy has been by far the best performing player on that squad, and he's been one of the most consistent ADs in the entire league so far. Uh, just his damage output, his CS per minute. Uh, they're not really losing in lane, him and Mickey X down there. Uh, and support, listen, I think this support pool in EU <laughs> is the weakest in recent memory for me. I, I would have to back that up. When we were going through this and I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, who am I going to pick for support, right? Because every other position, you can kind of be like, well, someone has stood out at least and had good performances. And you're watching yeah. these supports and you're kind of like, well, no one's really done that much. So, yeah. so it's really hard. I got Kasing there because, mainly because kabi has been playing so well. He hasn't been playing quite as well as Han Sama, I don't think. But I think Kasing is one of the main reasons that Kabi has been playing well. He's got a super wide champion pool. He's been great for Splice. It's definitely been something that they've needed, right? And he's been one of, and again, this has been a roster that hasn't quite performed up to what we expected, but he's definitely been a bright spot for them. Absolutely. Uh, our NA squads were pretty similar for the All-Pro. Our EU ones a are quite a bit different. Uh, here's Mark's All-Pro <laughs> first team. Look at that handsome man. Oh, just blue steel look right there coming out of the adc reckless love it he is my guy i think he's had a great performance to start and he's been the bright spot so far for me on, on a fanatic team that has had 
good performances out of guys like Caps and Broxa, but I think that Reckless is the guy still once again. And then for me, it's Jazuki in that mid lane. I'm all about the Italian Stallion. He has been styling on people, picking up those 1v2 outplays, loving what he's been doing. He got doing. styled on last week. Yeah, well, that happens. That's the, that's the risk you run when you're styling on people. Every once in a while, it comes back at you. But I think that Jazuki is going to be dishing it out more than he'll be taking it. And I think that when you're looking at elsewhere, Wonder and Jankos have to be the guys that you're picking in the top and jungle position. They have been the best out of the crop so far. And then for me, support, again, yeah, it's really hard to make a pick here. I went with Norris Garen. I thought that his kill... It's because of the dabs, right? Yeah, the dabs and his kill participation. You know, I'm all about that. Dabs the, first. The dab. Dabs is the number one thing there. Yeah. So that's how he made it onto my all pro list, but that one rounds it out for my first first team there. Yeah, when you're when you're looking at stats to select an all pro team, the number one stat you go to is of course dabs per game yeah. or DPG. Uh, it's very important. It's extremely vital. It's extremely. That's important. how I got my contract here. Dabs. Absolutely. He dab just wouldn't stop dabbing. Uh, let's look at the second team all pros for me in EU. Uh, look at this. It's not Jazuki oh. in the mid lane. People Whoa. might lose their minds. For that, I think Caps has actually been performing better than Reckless on that Fnatic squad. He's been fantastic. Reckless kind of struggled the first couple of weeks. He didn't look like the same Swedish Superman we're accustomed to seeing, whereas Caps was putting up carry performances and has been the whole time. I think he's pretty close to perks, actually, uh, when it comes to that mid lane. Uh, a lot of Fnatic guys there, Broxa and Reckless. I still think Reckless has had a pretty solid season so far. Uh, Cabo Shard. He's the only Vitality guy I have, which people <laughs> might have a their strange. mind blown. Uh, he's been much more like the old Cabochard that we've yes. seen take over some games. He's been great on a bunch of different picks. Gnar, Gangplank. Uh, he can play a lot of stuff. The Camille. I like what he's been doing in that top lane. And then Wadid <laughs> as support. He's been much better. That bot lane as a whole for G2 has been a lot better during this win streak. Yeah, definitely. He's been someone that has stepped up his performances uh, recently, and I think that's why he's really picked himself up into the second spot on the All-Pro team. Again, not a lot of competition for all these supports, but good enough to find yourself there. And his laughter, and he just makes you smile. He's that, got a contagious smile. That's definitely worth some value there, for sure. Right below Dabs. Uh, let's check out Mark's second team All-Pro. Again, a little different than mine. Definitely a little different. See, I'm going with Soaz, right? This is the guy we're talking oh. about. Some of these week one world's performances, yeah, he's had some of those. But sometimes he's turned it around and made other people look like they're playing the dog champ. Soaz has had enough performances for me to put him there. But I do think, again, yeah, you are right that Cabochard has been someone that you can throw into that position. And that's what I want to talk about, really, when you're looking at this all-pro team. That, you know, when you're looking at the differences between mine and Eric's, you know, they're very slight. Caps is someone who I would have had in the third spot, and I would have had Hans Sama, who was on your first pro, all-pro team, in as my third ADC type of thing. So these are all guys that are right up and around there. But for me, it's been enough that I've seen from many true packs, stepping it up, that attitude, everything that he's brought to the table so far. I've loved it, and he's picking it up there. Wadid, again, that support, he's been enough for them in G2. And then, yeah. Broxa has been somebody that has stepped up his performance from Worlds as well on Fnatic, which was something they were looking for, that development. And I think that he's brought enough to the table to pick up an all-pro second team spot. Yeah, uh, I, I don't want to overreact, but I heavily thought about putting Shook on that first team all-pro. <laughs> I mean, guy just completely turned around an entire team. Okay, yeah, you got to give him credit. As much as we flamed H2K for all the questions. Oh, they deserve the everything. flaming. Very deserved. But at the exact same time, very deserved praise right now. Way to go getting that 2-0 week. Very good job. And I think that, hey, when you're seeing them talk about, and yes, take this with the biggest grain of salt I can possibly ask you to take it with, they're winning 60 to 70% of their scrim games. Oh. Yes. Scrim, scrim games mean basically, mean basically nothing. Yes. But take that into account. H2K seeing a little bit of improvement. And hey, who would have thunk it? You get a real jungler instead of off-roll jungler cage reel. And it actually works out. Who knew? Three junglers uh, before you even hit 10 games. That is impressive, H2K. I will say, if they actually is, keep... Is it impressive? Is impressive the right word? It is impressive. <laughs> it's impressively bad. Yeah. It can still be, something can be so bad that uh -huh. it's impressive. Uh, I will say, though, if they keep playing at this level, that actually okay. makes it a lot more interesting in that bottom half of the standings to fight for the could, final playoff could work spots. Out. Could work out in the end for them. Lo the long con. The right long there. con. Even UOL doesn't look that bad, so... It's, it's going to be interesting coming down the stretch these last four weeks in Europe.
Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.